Welcome to A Girl in Concern. Tonight we're going to continue our talk about fluoride. Uh, as, as we've talked about in the past, they're collecting signatures for a referendum to stop the city from, from putting fluoride in the water, at least to the point of opening it up for a vote, which will be in May of 2014. And if anybody has been tuning into public access, they've probably been seeing a lot about this, and most of the time they'd probably be opposing it. And we're going to continue opposing it tonight. The, there's a large group, a coalition, what is it, uh, Everybody Deserves uh, Healthy Teeth or something like that. And uh, they're the ones that have been promoting this. And I don't know if they're the group that are doing it nationwide, but there is this going on in a lot of cities throughout the country, and it's probably been going on for some time. The movement's starting to go against it, uh, mainly, I think, because people don't believe that uh, they should be medicated in mass in such a way. Uh, it's an individual decision, which is what the what the, uh, the move to vote is all about. So uh, we're really lucky to have Frances Quimps Miller with us again tonight. She's on the show once before, and she has a lot of good information and a lot of anecdotal information uh, from her tribe and, and, uh, and her experiences in life. So welcome back to the program. Thanks, Jim. I'm really excited to have you back I'm tonight. happy to be back. Right. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, so uh, the main theme, as I wrote on, on uh, Facebook, was... Uh, the effects of fluoride on my, m minority communities. But we'll probably wander around and touch on a lot of other bases as well. But uh, Francis wanted to talk about that. And uh, uh, what is the, the main reason why you wanted to get into this, this theme? Um, so this particular issue is very, very near and dear to my heart, particularly as a person of color. Um, in fact, that was the main reason I got involved. I, uh, with the whole fluoride issue? With the issue? whole fluoride issue, absolutely. Um, you know, I had only six months ago, six, seven months ago myself, not really, I didn't have much of an understanding about the fluoride issue. I grew up with fluoridation. I really didn't see what the big deal was. And um, as I have mentioned before, you know, my spouse had asked me to stop using it, which I did. Um, and right as this fluoridation issue came up, one of the first things I thought about was how are minorities being affected? How are my people being affected? How are Native Americans, African Americans, Hispanics uh, being affected? And um, I immediately started to see that there are some serious issues with water fluoridation and people of color. Um, there are a number of things we could jump into on that. Um, so just pick one. So, so, so just pick one. So <clears throat> one of my number one concerns is about health. A lot of people talk about all kinds of concerns, you know, IQ and mass medication. These are all good primary concerns. The cosmetics of fluorosis. Cosmet, absolutely. Yeah. My personal concern, though, is about health because um, if you look at any health studies, you'll see that African Americans, Native Americans, Hispanic Americans, um, all, all sorts of minorities and also low-income people, low-income whites, are all uh, adversely affected by numerous health conditions. Uh, we tend to get it, we tend to get more of it and we tend to get it harder. And when we talk about medication and fluoride, we have to think about the fact that uh, these are people who are possibly drinking higher quantities of water. If you have diabetes, if you have kidney issues, mm -hmm. you're going to be drinking higher amounts of water, which means you're going to be ingesting higher amounts of fluoride if it's in the water. Higher than, than they extrapolate everybody should be having. Absolutely. Um, and so that particularly concerns me because what are the, he what are the health consequences? If, you're drink if you already have health issues and then on top of that you're drinking more fluoridated water and there's questions about fluoride's effect on the body, what could that do specifically to minority health concerns? So that was, uh, that was and continues to be why this is such a, a near and dear issue for me. Mm -hmm. And I know that, uh, even though that that isn't why you jumped into it, with, but I, I know that uh, you've had some experiences on the, on the reservation. Which, which reservation was that? Well, actually, my reservation is in Oklahoma, but my family, family. That, my family that I married into uh, is the Umatilla Reservation. Uh, I didn't make that distinction. That's okay. I'm glad you, I'm That's glad okay. you brought that up. That's okay. So I married into the family. Um, and, um, you know, from our family standpoint, uh, 
a lot of people don't know this in Oregon history, but there was actually already a 4,000 gallon fluoride spill. It happened in the 80s, uh, and it was, um, it was in Pendleton, Oregon, which is near the Umatilla Reservation. And um, we hadn't even, um, as our family discussed this, we hadn't even necessarily understood that there was an impact because we didn't know about the spill. It wasn't something that's you know popular that they're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, what happened was is both my uh, sister-in-law and brother-in-law have seen dentists and their dentist said, you have terrible, terrible fluorosis. They have some of the worst fluorosis that some dentists have seen. And so uh, it's interesting because they happen to be affected by that spill. They lived in an area where that spill carried out. And so obviously this is anecdotal information. We're not saying that Yes, their fluorosis is absolutely positively because of the spill, but we do wonder if there's a correlation. Mm -hmm. And again, this is an issue where are we affecting minority people? Were minority children affected as my sister and brother-in-law mm -hmm. could possibly have been? And I, I don't know if you're up on the science of it, but I have read, I've got a whole list of, of uh, pieces of paper on different issues, health issues of having to do this. I didn't bring it with me. I'll get it during one of the roll-ins. But, but uh, it could affect bones down the road. And this happened in the 80s. So people that might have been affected by that might have fluorosis. But other things that could that health uh, effects of that would be down the road. Absolutely. In fact, if you read Dr. Conant's book uh, about fluoride, um, in it he talks about how seronegative rheumatoid arthritis uh, which is something that Good I... Good job with that. <laughs> uh, thank you. Well, it's because I actually have it. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Seronegative uh, rheumatoid arthritis can mimic uh, signs of fluorosis in the body, bone fluorosis. Now, uh, I grew up with fluori fluoridated water. Um, I used fluoridated products. Uh, I, um, I also have been on m medicines, uh, in fact, since I was in my 20s, that have fluoride in them. A lot of people don't realize that actually 20, uh, somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of all medication has fluoride in it. And it's, uh, it's in fact, by uh, pharmacists, um, being, they're admitting that it's becoming more and more prevalent in medicines. So why, I was... Why is that? Well, uh, according to, and this is just as a lay person, I, I'm not a chemist, um, but in a chemistry magazine that I read, it stated that uh, fluoride releases oxygen molecules, and so, or it, it replaces oxygen molecules, and it's a cheap way to do it, and so it tends to go into the body a lot easier. This is just my mm -hmm. understanding as just a reader, but um, anyway. I've had lots of fluoride in my life in one way or another. And when I was diagnosed with my seronegative rheumatoid arthritis, interestingly enough, at that time, I was using a concentrated prescription fluoride toothpaste. Now again, I'm not saying that one equals the other, but I do think it is an interesting correlation. And I think it's definitely something that as we keep asking, why are more and more people getting autoimmune disease? Why are more and more people getting rheumatoid arthritis and other issues? I think it's important to maybe start look at looking at if fluoridation uh, has some kind of factor in this. Mm -hmm. It's probably something that uh, like that that has been under the radar for so long. And unfortunately, since they've started doing this in the mid 40s, uh, a lot of, of uh, research has been tamped down and to the point where there's been folks that have come out uh, with information against the use of fluoride that have uh, not, not only been uh, tamped down but have lost their jobs and, and been blackballed. Yeah, Phyllis, Phyllis Mullenix. Mullenix that was she the one. comes to mind. She's someone. Um, there was a scientist at the EPA who I think he lost his job. I think he was reinstated. I think there's some arguments around why that happened on both sides. But um, my understanding is, is that if you are a scientist, if you are a dentist, and you speak out on this particular issue about water fluoridation, um, there is potentiality to get blackballed. Mm -hmm. And it has happened uh, numerous times. And uh, But there are some speaking out, like uh, like a Dr. Bill Hosmanson, who was on last week, who talked about it. I've seen him all over the 
the uh, Fluoride Action Network website. That's mm -hmm. fluoridealert.org. Folks want to go to that website, and uh, if you want to, anything you want to know, just about is on that. In fact, I got a couple videos we might play, you know, to to kind of bolster up what we're talking about here. Uh, the whole theme about the minorities and, and the fact that the the uh, the diabetes and the kidney kidneys. I didn't know about that, but I know that Native Americans are like I don't know what three four times as high as a national average for for diabetes. I never have understood why diet. I might have something to do with it. Well, diet has. <laughs> a lot to do with this issue and I think that's one of the reasons why I I feel so passionately about this issue and why my uh, why I get triggered by this issue is because um, you know one of the angles that upstream and um, uh, you know Mark Wiener's people at uh, everyone deserves healthy teeth um, one of the things they keep saying is they keep saying one, safe and effective. In fact, that's the mantra: safe and effective, safe and effective. Safe and, effective. Yeah. Um, like and a yeah, it's yeah. almost it's almost comical to this point. Um, but on top of that, you know, they keep saying uh, they keep throwing out, oh, the poor the poor minority children, the poor low income children. What about them? You know, they need to have you know these bright white teeth, and I worry about them being in the dental chair. Couple things: one is um, even by their own account. Uh, the reduction in cavities is 25 percent. So if you have, you know, eight cavities, you're only going to have six. Um, that's, you know, for me, that's not a significant reason to uh, to mass fluoridate water. So that's one thing. The other thing is, what about the the poor minority children? Well, here's the thing. As a minority, I feel like if people truly truly want to be helpful to my people, to our people, and really help us, then what they need to do is think of a solution that's more than a Band-Aid, which at this point, water fluoridation is. You know, there are ways to target, particularly people of color and low-income people, that, that make a lot more sense. Um, you know, in, in uh, programs and welfare and other things like that, nutritional education, providing um, tubes of fluoridated toothpaste if you want to go that route. Uh, but getting to real solutions, not coming up with what is in essence the most cheap we solution they can find water in Tennessee from um, and the most inexpensive. You know, or excuse me, and I'm sorry I got a little distracted there. <laughs> the cheapest and the most toxic solution. That's what really bothers me is I almost feel like they're saying, well, this is what you get. You know, instead of really fun. looking at what's going on, really looking at what are the causes and conditions, what are the best practices to make sure that people um, not only have healthy teeth, you know, it's not about just everyone deserving healthy teeth, it's everyone deserving health. Mm -hmm. So, you know, making sure that p poor and minority they people have access to the best solutions, meaning something that's better than uh, a chemical that's handled by the National Sanitation Foundation. Personally, I don't want to take things that are handled by the National Sanita Sanitation Foundation. I want to take things that are um, guided by, you know, much higher practice and much higher standards. So I really, I'm very passionate about the fact that um, we deserve the cheapest, or we, we do not, excuse me, Oh, it's so frustrating. We do not deserve the cheapest and most toxic solution. We deserve something better. And I hope that by um, getting this on the referendum, getting this on the ballot, people will have a chance to decide and think for themselves, what are the best practices in this issue? Because I have a feeling we're going to come up with a lot more than what we have at this point. We can borrow a term from uh, our, our, our friend you know, uh, Mr. Es Esesketch, Mitt Romney, and personal responsibility, let people take a little more personal responsibility and let the government, and if, if they need to step into this, to, uh, and maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't, but they should step into it in such a way that they, they make, do effective long range rather than a toxic band-aid. Well, that's, the, that's exactly it, is that when we don't look at why something is happening, when we don't uh, take the time to do, you know, w they're giving plenty of studies, but not a single study that was prevented, uh, presented noted that anyone was fluoride deficient. 
No one seems to be fluoride deficient. Uh, poor, in, uh, low income and minority people are not fluoride deficient. What they are is uh, there has a tendency with diet to be deficient in certain nutrients. Uh, in fact, vitamin D tends to be something that a lot of people tend to be really low in, especially in Oregon. Is there a link possibly between vitamin D and this issue? What, uh, what, what else is going on beyond just the outside idea of, you know, a mouthful of white teeth that is happening below the surface. I think we deserve, um, uh, people of color and low income people deserve something more than just a cursory, um, quick band-aid. Right. And, and the fact that for whatever, five decades, six decades, the, the, uh, the, uh, research in that direction, which might have, you know, about fluoride, it might have gone in that direction, has been discouraged. None of that was found out. They figured, oh, we got this quick band-aid, bam, so we don't worry about delving into the, the uh, effects of nutrition and hygiene and all that. Well, they they also, thought they had a way, they thought they had it fixed. Absolutely. Well, and they started putting it in, they started putting it in the water, 40s, 50s, 60s, before they had really understood what the potential effects are. So it'd be interesting, um, even though we have all of these studies, uh, according to upstream and groups like that, saying, oh, you know, the ADA signs off and all of these other things, but, well, then why are all of these other people coming out of the woodwork saying that there's an issue? You know, I, I don't think that people would would be concerned about it if they just uh, were trying to have fun. You know, I don't think people would come out and be uh, potentially blackballed in their professional careers, lose their standing in their community if if this wasn't important to them, if they didn't think that there were real consequences. So I think it's really important when um, people discuss this issue to not sort of treat those of us who are and I don't even think anti-fluoridation is a term uh, that I personally consider myself. I'm not anti-fluoridation. What I am is pro-clean water. What I am is pro-real choices. What I am is pro-democracy. And what I am is pro-health. And so I think when we talk about this issue, all of the people who are examining this issue in a serious way and coming out and saying, I think there might be some issues. I think we need to look at detrimental health effects. All of the people doing that are all very concerned. We care about kids. You know, to say that uh, you don't care about kids' teeth is, <laughs> it's, it's at best insulting and at worst something else. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, the thing is, is we care so much that we are willing to be considered, conspir you know, called names like tin hats and Kool-Aid drinkers mm -hmm. because we care that much about the future of our children. Well, now that you mentioned children, that's exactly where I was going to go with this next. Uh, <clears throat> even though there's a lot of infants in this, in this, in this country, in this city, they are kind of a minority because a minority isn't necessarily the number of people. It's, it's the power the people have, mm -hmm. you know, and the people in the native reservations or in the, the black people, they, 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 uh, African Americans or Latinos, they, they're not able to, to, uh, participate in the democracy quite as much because of, because of the fact that this is a kind of a white hegemony that's running this country. But there's a little little uh, four-minute clip I ran across by a fellow named Joey, Joey Hensley, and uh, Dr. Joey Hensley, and, uh, and he put this little piece together about uh, why we need to make sure that the infants don't get fluoride. So maybe we'll run that first clip, and then we'll be back in about four minutes. We have been fluoridating our water in Tennessee for more than oh, 50 years, but Great. never before Thanks. has there been more talk than that fluoridating our water might be a bad idea and a health risk. Tonight, Dennis Ferrier has the latest developments on a story that impacts all of us. Joey Hensley is a respected physician. He's also a Tennessee state lawmaker. He is now combining those two professions to make a very strong point. We've been doing it 50 years, uh, but just because we've been doing something 50 years doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. Hensley's talking about something most of us don't even think about, fluoridating water. After much research, the doctor has sent out a letter to every water district in Tennessee asking them to stop fluoridating water. The evidence, he says, fluoride works better when you rub it on your teeth, not when you drink it. That fluoridation is medication added to water without your permission, and that's wrong. But most of all, because the National Research Council believes young children are getting three to four times the dose of fluoride as adults. And now the American Dental Association is telling mothers not to make baby formula with fluoridated water. 
because of fear of dental fluorosis. And that's big news, and that really hasn't been uh, uh, publicized very much. Health researcher Dan Stockin believes that this ADA warning about baby formula and fluoride is just the beginning. This, the ramifications of this are so huge, I'm sure that the state health department hasn't quite figured it out yet. Because see, once the door cracks, and it is now for what it does to teeth, the next group, one of the next groups that's going to start raising their hands and saying, what about us? is people who are on dialysis and people who have borderline kidney damage and impairment. Then there's all the people that have hypothyroidism. Scientists like Nobel Prize winner Arvid Carlson and a large group of EPA scientists have called for the banning of fluoride because we don't know how much we're ingesting, so we don't know if we're being poisoned. There are so many potential legal things about to happen that as a taxpayer, I think it would be really, really smart for the water districts and the metro Nashville. Look, just if people want fluoride, let them use fluoridated toothpaste and spit it out. But don't go poisoning everyone. Don't be, don't continue this after everyone knows all this information now, just because it's not convenient. Uh, Dr. Hensley has already had one response. Spring City in Ray County is going to stop fluoridating its water. And it is that simple. I mean, there's no law. It's all voluntary, Dan, so anyone can turn on the fluoride or turn it off. Dennis, let's make sure we're clear on this. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste, but it's actually a poison, right? It's, it sure is, and here's the, the quickest evidence. Go to your uh, bathroom and pick up your uh, toothpaste, and you'll see a warning that if you, a child swallows more than a pea-sized amount of toothpaste, call poison control. Wow. Dennis Ferrier. All right, we're back. I thought that was very appropriate because this, there's a, a lot of cities in this country <clears throat> and all over the world, but in this country mainly, that, that, are, uh, that have been fluoridating and have stopped doing it. And, uh, and, and these, these coalitions that promote it are uh, bringing this up, I think, in Kalamazoo. They're bringing it up in, in some place, like maybe Phoenix. Uh, this isn't just here. And a lot of places they get turned down because folks are taking the time, as the folks on that newscast did, to, uh, to research it. And the folks who promote this are pretty disingenuous when they try to paint everybody with a broad brush like you were talking about, about, you know, being uh, tinfoil hats and crazy and all that. And when, when uh, there's an awful lot of information out there and, and people are searching this information out and, uh, and they're finding that, uh, you know, it's, it's a toxic substance that, that is uh, uh, not pharmaceutical grade even. It's, it's industrial grade. And there's a lot of sub points to this that... Uh, uh, well, you can go to the Fluoride Alert website and find a, an enormous amount of information. And uh, I'm so happy that uh, Dr. Conard has taken the time to put that together, that website, because he's a clearinghouse for all this information. Absolutely, absolutely. I, in, the, in the early days of this movement, I actually consulted that site, and um, there's more sites popping up. And, you know, the thing is, is that, uh, in fact, you mentioned today uh, about... Uh, about uh, cities that are stopping the fluoridation, and I believe Santa Fe in New Mexico stopped I did hear that. today. Right. So uh, you know, and the, and if you go to Fluoride uh, Action Network, I think they have an updated list of the cities that continue to stop fluoridation. So um, there's, you know, there are cities that continue to do it, and they may for a while, but we're seeing more and more cities that are questioning this. Even if their city councils, much like our city councils, are making the choice for the people, mm -hmm. um, we are seeing more and more people stand up and say, we question this and we want, you know, our city to do the same. I think that's what just happened in Phoenix. It was a big row over it, and I think Phoenix decided to continue with it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the folks are, are moving ahead with trying to put a stop to it. We talked about, we'll get back to the theme of, of minorities. Uh, I want to put a shout out to Beth Hahn, who has put this, put this uh, theme together. And uh, I thought, yeah, good idea, because we've covered, you know, what dentists have to say. We, we covered fish last week. There's been numerous uh, themes within the theme of fluoride that, that, uh, that we've talked about. And I think that the effect upon the, the, the uh, minority community is very important. And there's, uh, she sent me something that was statements from black Hispanics leaders. And there's a, a list of, of leaders here. One of them is, uh, I forget her name now. Maybe I don't have that sheet right here. Oh, yeah, one of them is uh, Reverend Alveda King. 
and uh, she's pretty credible in her community. And uh, do you know specifically? Well, I think she's, she's Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s cousin. Cousin or something, mm -hmm. right? And she's yeah. influential. Uh, you know, she uh, and uh, also Andrew Young, who uh, is an was an ambassador to the UN, and uh, he was also a contemporary of Dr. King. Right. Um, and I, I wouldn't say that these are people you would call. You know, Kool-Aid enthusiasts by any means. <laughs> right, right. Well, she she's a quote here. The Flor Florida Gate, Florida Gate, Florida Gate, Florida Gate scandal continues to unravel. All water fluoridation legislation should be repealed, repealed in all states that enact fluoridation. This is again, this is Dr. Alveda King. Generally, people with built-in biases in support of fluoridation have been control controlling the discussion about harm from fluorides. The Center for Disease Control has clearly been trying to preserve fluoridation at all costs, but the facts about fluoride harm are coming out anyway. This is a civil rights issue. No one should be subjected to drinking fluoride in their water, especially sensitive groups like kidney patients and diabetics, babies in their milk formula, or poor families that cannot afford to purchase unfluoridated water. Mm -hmm. They don't have a choice. Absolutely. Black and Latino families are being disproportionately harmed. And there's like four different people, Reverend William Owens, and uh, of course, you mentioned uh, mentioned the the uh, Andrew Young, and then there's also Dr. Gerald Durley, and uh, he's Dr. Hurley Durley is a clinical psych psychologist, environmentalist, and pastor of a Providence Baptist church. Now, these don't sound like people that are going to go off half cocked and uh, and uh, make these claims about the dangers of it just because you know uh, they want to throw out alarms to their to their uh, their church or their community. They're they're searching these. These uh, these different aspects of it, and they're coming out against it. And uh, to write them off with just a broad brush that they're just alarmists, like the uh, these different coalitions that promote this are doing, you know, it's it's, it's disingenuous at the least, and and it's a uh, probably a whole lot worse than that. If you well, want to dig into it. Absolutely. Um so uh, Reverend Owens, who is the president of the Coalition of African American um, Ministers, he, he also wrote a statement on behalf of them. They have concluded that they do not, uh, they don't want mass medication, they don't want forced medication, and that this is a civil rights issue. And because, again, minorities tend to be disproportionately harmed by uh, fluoride in terms of, of dental fluorosis and the p potential uh, consequences and risks to people who have diabetes, th thyroid issues, kidney issues. Um, this is very much a civil rights issue. This is, this is in part why this is so near and dear to me is because, um, you know, <laughs> we're still dealing with medical apartheid. We're still dealing with the um, after effects of, of forced experiments, and though uh, water fluoridation is, is more ubiquitous, it, it is uh, more generalized, the negative consequences seem to disproportionately harm uh, people of color. And so we need to be able to allow people to have a choice. If um, these families want to use fluoride in their toothpaste if there are programs that maybe um, you know help them with the swish programs in school or the tablets that's fine but you know the thing is is that a lot of for instance medicaid patients um, who have say uh, severe dental fluorosis medicaid won't pay to help for that and so, you know, one of the arguments is, well, you know, we're trying to help people of color so they can get, you know, good jobs and they can interview well and, so, you know, so they basically look acceptable. Mm -hmm. It um, isn't just a, something you can write off as just being non-consequential if it's cosmetic. Right. But the problem is, is that if they have cosmetic dental fluorosis, um, Medicaid won't pay for that. No one mm -hmm. will pay for that. Um, I would, I would, you know, question, you know, are these people who are so for this, are they going to help and pay for that if that happens to people, if people have fluorosis and they feel embarrassed, mm -hmm. um, especially if they are disproportionately affected by fluorosis? And I think, um, I think we all ultimately know what the answer to that is. Sure. You know, how about the companies that are making, making the, uh, the uh, fertilizers that this is a toxic uh, residue from, and instead of them having to pay for getting rid of it, they end up find a way to make money on it and they and they sell it and they and they ship it in some places they spill it you know <laughs> and so this is this is a win-win situation for 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 them and you know 
if, if, if they're going to make the fertilizers, you know, we want to talk about the issue of, of, of uh, the, the, what they are doing, but the fact that they have these, these chemicals uh, left over and uh, they ha have to be charged with doing something with them, uh, and they don't even, and uh, getting back to uh, another point, they don't even uh, uh, sterilize them, whatever the word would be, because they, they come to us with uh, arsenic and uh, other heavy metals. Is mm -hmm. what I understand mm -hmm. anyway. So a great deal of the uh, uh, hydrofluorosilicic acid. So that's the one of the technical <laughs> names. I know it took me a couple tries yeah, early on for that. Yeah. Um, but one of the main sources of that, it used to be aluminum manufacturing. Now it's uh, phosphate fertilizing, fertilizer. And um, <clears throat> uh, just do a cursory Google search of uh, phosphate mining fluoride Florida and look at the impact that it's having on the land there. Now, I don't know if um, the, the fluoride that the city is going to buy, if we get that far, which I really hope it doesn't, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they're going to be getting it from China or from Florida or where they're going to be getting it from, but wherever they get this fluoride from, uh, the land use issue is a big deal because they're destroying the land. If you, again, if you do that Google, re, uh, re, uh, Google search, you will find that a lot of things are happening and a lot of people are against um, the phosphate mining itself. So this is actually has some environmental uh, consequences as well. I want to get back to what you were talking though really quick about the babies. So uh, as we know, the CDC has come out and said that uh, infant formula, uh, children who mainly drink infant formula and not breast milk right. can be adversely affected because um, uh, babies uh, should only have uh, 0 .005 uh, le parts per million levels of fluoride. It's much less than which is <laughs> Which, you know, uh, 0.7 is obviously a lot higher. So obviously there are going to be a lot of kids who are breastfed, so perhaps those children may not have to be as concerned, but what about children who are not breastfed? Um, what about babies who uh, can't digest milk? They have to have formula. Um, this is particularly concerning to me also, again, because all babies, as you noted, don't don't have a say. Mm -hmm. um, but again, for me, especially with uh, minority and low income children, if they're if they do ha if they're born with health issues to begin with, once again they are going to be even more adversely affected by the fluoridated water. And so again, I think you know one of the phrases that they keep saying is the greater good, the greater good. We're doing this for the greater good. The problem with the greater good argument is that the greater good completely forgets about all of the people who are on on the margins and. As a marginalized person, <laughs> I know that I am one of those people who's going to be on the margins and that a lot of people just like me on reservations, in low-income communities in Portland and all over are going to be uh, very potentially affected by this. And so I think when we talk about the greater good, we really have to think about, sorry, this is emotional for me. <clears throat> we really have to think about the people on the margins and just how they're going to be affected by this. Mm -hmm. And then we use the word margins, but that's a pretty thick margin. The margin probably takes in it maybe as many people as the people that they're in the center. Well, and when they Using say... that analogy Absolutely. There. And when they say greater good, just which greater good are they referring to? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and like that Dr. Uh, Osmondson was saying last week, and he, the, he was finding, uh, he, he was seeing that this really helped people. But it come to find out that the people that was responding to it favorably were, you know, upper class or middle class, and you know they ate better, and it was more a, a, a judgment or a a, a a reflection of their lifestyle than it was the fact that they were doing uh, getting fluoride. Well, the basic thing is water is life. You know, um, when we have access to clean water, it's amazing what we have access to. Clean water uh, and enables us to have healthier lifestyles, when we are able to um, 
consume something that is as close to pure as possible. Now, some will argue, well, you know, they chlorinate the water and they do all of these things to, to the water. They put chemicals in it. Well, yeah, that's to make it more potable. It has nothing to do with, um, uh, fluoride has absolutely has nothing to do with yeah. actually making someone healthier. It may possibly it may possibly give you fewer cavities, but there are also plenty of studies that show there are other ways to eliminate cavities. And as I've seen in my own anecdotal experience, uh, by changing my diet, I improved my dental health. So uh, again, I just think, you know, this is, I'm just gonna say it, this is laziness. This is laziness on the part of our government. This is laziness it. on the part of um, many different uh, uh, you know, institutions, and I think really what we need to start doing is surveying and researching real solutions and finding out why, why this is happening. Why do we have so many dental problems? Is it really because we don't have enough fluoride or is it possibly something else? Mm -hmm. Or a combination of something else. You know, we've been talking about its effect and uh, for those who want to do a little more research, I ran across a, a study, Harvard School of Public Health impact of fluoride on the neurological development in children has to do with the loss of IQ which you hear a lot about uh, you know you can search this out for yourself impact of fluoride on the neurological development in children now I didn't get a chance to read it I probably wouldn't understood it anyway but uh, there you know contrary to what the, the people promote fluoride are, are saying uh, there are studies out there and they're beginning to give more studies like like was said last week with the the fellow that came on to talk about the fish howard uh, the the uh for some so, some years now 50 60 years research money has not been available because the research might have been in negative uh, uh findings having to do with fluoride so those haven't been done at least they haven't been done a lot but there are some out there and uh hopefully is is the is the movement towards uh, people becoming aware of, of the effects of fluoride uh, there will be um, people will have more more um, bravery and step up and do these researches. And he talked about the fish. Wasn't right. that the fish salmon? The, environment, yeah. the salmon. So this is again another clean water issue, and this is again another issue that ha that involves minorities because uh, we have a number of Native American fishermen, uh, fisher people, and uh, and who could be negatively impacted if salmon are not able to spawn where they were born, and. Uh, fluoride happens to be one of those chemicals that when they sense it, they won't go there. Mm -hmm. So if fluoridation is where they spawned, or excuse me, where they were born, they won't go back. So if there are fewer salmon, that's going to affect affect the native fishers who uh, rely on this to feed their families. So again, this is another income and minority issue. I just think there's so many facets here that mm -hmm. uh, just have not been addressed. and. You know, my guess is that at this point, um, the uh, the upstream people, healthy people, you know, they're probably at this point looking around to see how they can strategize and what talking points they can come up with right now. And I really hope that um, in talking about this, that we can address specifically um, two minorities, really get minorities involved and not just give them information from one side or the other side, but really allow people to decide for themselves. I think this is why it's so important that we're doing this referendum is mm -hmm. because the citizens of Portland were not given a chance to, to educate themselves on this. This decision was just swept in and um, what we need to do is have people look at both sides of the issues and say, hmm, I agree with this, I don't agree with this, and then make an informed decision. And so that's why I'm so happy that Clean Water Portland has um, has has stepped up to the plate and done what our commissioners uh, weren't willing to do and give the people a chance to have some time to decide and have a say. Right, and that's, uh, that's at cleanwaterportland.org, at www.cleanwaterportland.org. There's just a little less than a week. I think the, the uh, initiative signatures have to be in their office by noon next Friday, something like that and then they have to be brought down to the uh, city. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're moving ahead very well, their signatures. And, uh, but uh, a situation like this, we need to get, you know, at least 50% more than, than, than it's being called for. 20,000 are called for. I don't know where they get the figure, a certain percentage of the population or 
something like that. I don't know, but uh, we need to get certainly a lot more than, than is necessary. Well, the nice thing is that we are, we are on target. Um, but, you know, we cannot slow down. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, again, this is issue uh, as a chief petitioner and as someone who has been on the streets petitioning myself. Um, you know, what I really love about this right now is that this is I've never seen uh, people so engaged in the democratic process. I, uh, from both sides. From both the, sides. Oh, yeah, and yeah. you know, the funny, the funny thing is, is that I, I do know people who don't have a problem with the water being fluoridated. What they do have a problem with is that it was snuck in under the radar so quickly and that our city council didn't give the people a chance to have a say. So, um, you know, whether you're for water fluoridation or not, uh, you know, really this this referendum is about people having a choice. It's about, um, in the end as well, you know, about people having the time to educate themselves because like I said, we just were not given that space of time to really, mm -hmm. to really understand. Well, I understand that they gave the, the people promoting this a couple of hours to give a, a presentation but then they give the people that were opposing it two minutes apiece, and they didn't allow, like I think Bill Osmondson was talking about, it, or maybe it was Rick North, uh, didn't give them a chance to, to prepare and, and, uh, and give a presentation it against it. It wasn't truly a balanced uh, process. I was there. In fact, I was the first one to speak. Uh, I had gotten there at 9.30 in the morning, and I believe I was able to finally speak at 4.30. And um, as I mentioned, you know, I have, wow. my, <laughs> I have my rheumatoid arthritis. I have other chronic illnesses. And so every time that I have to, you know, go out and do one of these things, it's actually a, a bit physically daunting for me to do so. But this issue is so important to me that I, I, I got there first. And, um, yeah, people, people uh, from who were, quote, anti-fluoride, um, or as I like to say, pro-clean pro water, um, yeah, you know, we, we did get a chance to speak, but the folks who were from upstream and everyone deserves, everyone deserves uh, healthy teeth, um, they, had, they, they had unlimited amounts of time. All of our time was was given three minutes, and then I think two minutes and one minute, and so ultimately it just wasn't a fair and ba a fair and balanced. It wasn't a fair yeah. and balanced process. Right, <laughs> it wasn't, and and that's enough. You know, like you said, even folks that agree to think, which I don't know how they can think that they have the right to vote to to medicate somebody else, but at least they 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 agree that we need to make this a common decision rather than, than a decision by three out of five. Well, and I think it's important to note, too, that um, the League of United uh, Latin American uh, Citizens, LULAC, um, they actually uh, put out a, um, they put out a, a notice saying basically that they were f against forced medication and they addressed uh, fluoride, specifically water fluoridation. And they talked about how um, this was taking away choice. This was a, a, a particularly taking away choice for, uh, for people who are, again, dis disproportionately affected um, by, by fluorosis. And um, so, you know, again, there are there are people of coalition, people of color coalitions out there. Um, I think you will find that some of the uh, organizations here in Portland who um, stood behind uh, the "Everyone Deserves Healthy Teeth" campaign were only given one-sided information. And um, I think that uh, I think ultimately we're going to, with getting this referendum passed, have a chance for everyone to have a say and more importantly, everyone to have a chance to really get to know and understand the issue and decide for themselves. Decide for themselves. And their resolution says exactly that. They go through a whole bunch of whereases. They say, whereas fluoridation is mass medication of the public through the public water supply, whereas current science shows that fluoridation chemicals pose increased risk to sensitive subpopulations, including infants, elderly, diabetics, kidney patients, and people with poor nutritional status, and now that was the National Research Council or something where that information mm -hmm. came from. It wasn't. They just didn't pull it out of the air. And then they, they go on to say that uh, be it resolved that LULAC, what's the Latin... Uh, so League of United Latin American Latin Citizens. American citizens. Be it resolved that LULAC commends efforts by organizations that oppose forced mass medication of the public drinking supplies using fluorides that are industrial grade toxic waste byproducts which contain contaminants, arsenic, lead, mercury, which further endanger life. So they, they support the efforts that, that uh, 
that folks are doing to to uh, and then they also talk about the, the fact that it's, it's forced and we need to be able to uh, mm -hmm. make that decision ourselves. Absolutely. So they're supporting efforts all over the country, and this is going on all over the country. This isn't just in Portland, one or two cities, and it has been going on three years ago, I think, Hood River voted it down. And ten years ago, a very conservative area, Redding, where I'm from, California, voted it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's both sides of the aisle. It's, it's, uh, it's not just, you know, a progressive, uh, liberal uh, situation here people people are paying attention to this and uh, and uh well like like uh dr paul Conant, he opened his talk that night saying we are witnessing the end of the floridation era yeah and uh you know i mean maybe somewhat wishful thinking but i think that it's <laughs> i think that you know the more light you shine on something the more you see well and you know it's interesting that you mentioned that randy leonard uh in explaining he kept explaining over and over well most of the united states does it Okay, but only 7% of the world actually intentionally fluoridates their water. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, again, I almost think that speaks a little bit to um, our American ego a little bit. Oh, well, just because America does it means that it's really the best choice. Exactly. And, you know, ultimately I think that um, because... 93% of the rest of the world does not choose this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that actually really speaks ultimately more to the fact that, you know, you know, we really should let people have clean drinking water, first and foremost. You know, water is such a huge issue. Um, just people even having access to it. We're lucky in Portland that we have access to Bull Run, which a billion people don't. Which even Randy Leonard, if you if you YouTube it, you can find him on YouTube saying that, you know, we have the best water in the world. We absolutely do. So, you know, why why um, in the name of really something that is is ultimately, I think, um, again, I think a lazy way of going about it, uh, uh, trying to deal with dental caries. Why why do something to our water when it's so great the way it is? You know, mm -hmm. there are people who would love to have the clean, beautiful water that we have, and so even a small amount of it. And so you know, I think I think ultimately, um, you know, as I said, people will have a choice and they'll be able to decide and they'll really be able to think. What are the causes, you know, of dental caries? Is it that we don't have enough fluoride or is it something else? And it isn't water, putting in your water or nothing. There's a lot of other alternatives. And getting back to real quickly to what you said about uh, about it being just kind of like a United States arrogance or something. We we have a good dose of Randy Leonard arrogance who's saying that he wants to have this built by the time he wants to have the fluoridated water flowing, is that how he said it? By the time the, the initiative, which is different than the referendum, would be coming due. Something like that. Right, because he, um, you know, it was pushed through, and he was very proud of the fact that it was pushed through uh, for March of 2014, I think, and the voters w wouldn't have a say until uh, May of 2014. And, you know, I, 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 I want to believe in the best in people, so um, I, I'm, I'm not a name caller. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, refer to people as wearing tin hats or drinking Kool-Aid. Uh, I, I, I want to believe the best in people, and I think he has the best intentions, or at least I would like to believe he does. I would like to believe um, uh, That being said, I think that, uh, again, you know, I just think that even some of the people who are the most passionate about fluoridating our, our water uh, seem to miss um, the point that there are going to be a lot of people on the margins who are going to be affected. And when you think about your city, you have to think about everybody. Mm -hmm. You can't just think of, you know, a select few group of people. And um, again, you know, the whole issue of low income and people of color was touted over and over again. And, you know, I, I, I just really think that um, in the name of really Fluoride looking at, and the pineal gland. Um, helping people, um, I think we have to look at all areas, all causes, and really institute best practices, not just easy and cheap and toxic ones. Mm -hmm. Well, I know we have a couple other videos here. We may, we probably won't get to those, but uh, what I'd like to do is open up the phones. We could go in a million different directions, and we have videos on how this affects the pineal gland. We have video on, uh, on uh, what was that other one? Um, uh, it's lost here. I don't have it right in front of me. But the, but it's important to to uh, 
uh, research what we're talking about. It affects the pineal gland and also it affects, fluoride affects the thyroid gland. In fact, it was used to suppress hyperactive thyroid in the past and uh, there were some really negative consequences of that before they realized that the, even though it might have affected the thyroid in the way they were targeting, it caused other problems as well. So we will open up the phones. There's the number. We can continue the conversation. We can get into some videos. We've got eight minutes left. Time went really fast. Wow. This is a large, <laughs> large issue. And uh, it, it, uh, it brings in, as uh, integral issues like this, pivotal issues like this, they touch on so many other things. When, when you're when you're discussing this and uh, and, and and this theme of, of the minority communities especially since the people promoting this are leaning so heavy on how this is going to help pe people I think we have a call already we'll get the first caller up first caller you're on the air first one's always kind of bumpy here first caller you're on the air we'll keep working on that one we want to hear what folks have to say questions or or comments. Well, they'll, they'll keep working on that one. They'll get that one up because I know, I know there's people out there that probably want to make comments. If you if you're think that fluoride in the water is a good idea, you know, let us know what you think. Well, we're going to have a, a couple questions for you as well, though. Absolutely. And I think that's really important is that, you know, this doesn't have to be one sided. You know, you don't have to be anti fluoride to not want it put in the water. You don't have to be. Um, you know, a, a, again, a tin hat wearer to think that this is not such a great idea. I think there are people who uh, think that it's it's a good ch and and uh, you know good choice for them. But I think you know, again, it comes down to personal choice and and the ability for everyone to to decide for to make themselves. Make that decision themselves. Okay, we'll try that again. Uh, first caller on the air. Guess they're having trouble with the buttons in there. But you know, like we like we were saying, I mean, you know, if, oh, oh, boy, we're, we're getting uh, getting inundated with noise here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> are you there? All right. Well, you know, the whole thing is there are alternatives, and especially since I think it was the FDC or, or some government agency was saying that this really only works topically anyway, not systemically. So Absolutely. Th so there are uh, there are alternatives, and there are a lot better alternatives. It's just they're not the quick fix that this is purported to be. And a actually, I wanted to make a quick point about that. So do do me a favor and take a quick sip of your water. All right. I'll take a quick sip too. Okay. Best water in the world. All right. So where did that water hit your That's teeth? Water. All right. Not very well. Maybe the back of them. Maybe the bit. back of them a little bit up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, that's kind of another point. Is uh, water, fluoridated water is kind of a weak way to go because only pretty much for me, depending on how you drink water, only my upper back teeth get hit. So you know, and I, actually, when I did have cavities, fluoridated water ate cavities. Most of mine were down here. Mm -hmm. So okay, I'm getting a flashing light there. We might have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the air. I wish you luck. All right. Can you hear me this time? Hello, caller. Hello. Hi. Uh, I think there's somebody there. but we... Oh, there you are. Hello. Okay. Well, anyway. You're all uh, right. We can hear you now. You may not know about. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a, a basically fairly prime versus level of aluminum. And it was uh, uh, several cases, several lawsuits against rental aluminum. Oh, that, uh, that's a really bad connection. Like I said, every show for a while, we've got a new control room situation going, and that it, uh, it uh, we have issues with some of the new equipment. But he was saying a lawsuit against rental aluminum, and that's probably uh -huh. getting to the, the the issues that the uh, well, like was talked about last week. The, uh, the fluoride into the water affected the fish, and it was a study done up at John Day Dam. Mm -hmm. That might have something to do with what the fellow was saying. I wish he could have brought that on. Well, I'm not sure also if he was talking about it too, but also another piece of Oregon history is uh, there was a lawsuit against the Reynolds Company. There was a farm family, and of course in the moment I'm forgetting the town, um, but if you go to uh, fluoridefreepdx.org, that's my my blog, and I actually posted a story about this. Uh, there was a family who, uh, a farm family who had a farm uh, behind the Reynolds uh, Aluminum Processing Company, and um, 
and they actually got terrible, terrible bone fluorosis to the point where the little girl couldn't walk, or she, you know, her ankles were so that's cracking. that's not just cosmetic. No, no, it was much further, and it was from the fumes coming through. And, um, and again, so, you know, Oregon actually, this is, Oregon has a long history and relationship with this issue. And I think if people, you know, do a little bit of research, they'll find that um, this, this fight uh, has gone on for a long time in various ways. Right. People need to take personal responsibility and get information, not just accept us or accept the, the uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Everyone Deserves Healthy Teeth Coalition or something yeah, like absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, uh, the, the beautiful thing about a democracy is we, we can uh, find out for ourselves. We can make informed choices with informed consent yeah. <laughs> and um, and you know again this is a, a issue about the precautionary principle making sure people have a choice and that was the light blinking so I'll be quiet now. First caller or maybe second or third I don't know. You're on the air. Hello? Hello Hi. you're on the air. Can you hear me? We yes. can hear you. Can, can you hear okay. us? It's, it's uh what I'm hearing from here in is very uh, discombobulated, but I'll try and get my point across. Oh, please do. I watch all of the, a lot of local cable access TV, and all these little small towns have their little small town parades. And what do they throw out, and whether it's Oregon City, Fairview, Gresham, Gaston, Beaverton, Hillsboro, what do they have the people do when they're going down the parade route that are in the parade? They're throwing candy out to the kids. I got a suggestion. <laughs> Instead of fluoride, why don't they throw toothbrushes out there and throw dental little uh, uh, capsules of dental floss out to the kiddies instead of candy. And I've been meaning to call up all of those uh, municipalities that I just mentioned when they had their municipal uh, parade. Uh, hey, quit throwing kitty cocaine out to the kids and throw out something worthwhile then because all you're doing is promoting this stuff. And by the way, speaking of small towns, I guess the mayor of uh, Tualatin and the mayor of Gresham uh, are both kind of blindsided by this whole thing. I don't think they like the idea of uh, this fluoride being forced on their communities either. Is that correct? That's correct. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. And, and actually, it was funny, the day that we filed the uh, petition for referendum, that very day, I looked on the counter um, in the auditor's office, and there was a bowl of candy sitting out there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, you should go into Fred Myers right now. Every two months, you know, they have uh, Fred Myers is full of, of, of candy. It's Halloween, and then it's Christmas, then it's... Then it's um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Valentine's Day and then Mother's Day. And we're down to about a minute yet, so we're going to have to let the phone calls go for now. Disappointing. I really wanted to talk to folks. But uh, uh, throw away the candy and, uh, you know, throw them, throw them a, a link to a, to a, uh, to a, a website that will give them some information. But we got less than a minute. I want to thank you to come on the program. Thank you so any, much. Any I, was, shots? Yeah. I was really, really happy to be on. Right. You know, everything in moderation. So candy, sure. In moderation. Fluoride? Sure, but with your choice, mm -hmm. your choice in moderation. Um, for more information, uh, cleanwaterportland.org is the place to go. Uh, remember that this is not about being anti-fluoride. This is actually, um, I know for me, about being pro-clean uh, pro water, pro-health, pro-children. Right. <laughs> and um, and for me especially, really, um, I'm really for and really hopeful that um, you know minorities and low-income people don't get the short end of the stick in this particular right, matter. We're down to about eight seconds. Want to thank the crew. Want to thank the callers who tried to get through. Uh, we'll be back next week, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in.